from these lectures, at least half the lecture is really going to be Western physiology, Western etiology, biochemistry, what is happening in the body uh, from a functional medicine point of view with these diseases. Like when we talk about thyroid, you know, what does it mean for thyroid to go down in a Western medicine point of view? What are the symptoms? How did it happen? We're going to talk about laboratory tests. If you have permission to do lab tests, we'll talk about what tests to order. If you don't have permission to do lab tests, we'll tell you how to read lab tests that someone else has, has ordered. And some of these lab tests are critical uh, to know the condition of your patient. If, if your patients are not seeing regular doctors, there are certain tests that they really should have for certain conditions. So we're going to talk about those. So we're going to get a lot of Western modern Western physiology and etiology. Etiology means how the disease happened. We're going to talk about demographics, uh, who's got it, where's it spreading to, how's it going down. And we're going to talk about how Western doctors fix it, what kind of drugs they use, what they really do, do they work, do they not work, um, and so on. Yeah, yeah. And then the other half is we're going to get into the therapeutics. Now, the therapeutics will involve how do we organize this problem from a TCM point of view. My presumption is everybody taking this course is trained in traditional Chinese medicine. That may not be true. You may be naturopaths who are interested to see what we have to say. That's fine. I'm, I think I can explain things well enough that you can keep up no matter what side of the fence you're on. We're going to talk about Zongfu patterns, what kind of differentiations we commonly see, not the big umbrella of like everything that's possible because a good TCM practitioner doesn't care the name of the disease. They want to know what Zongfu patterns are going on. But I want to talk about patterns that are more common. And then I want to talk about how do we fix it. And fixing it mostly is going to be either um, formulas that are already made, somebody has got it, and I'll include the products, the classical formulas and the modern formulas, and by modern I'm including American-made practitioner uh, uh, companies like Golden Flowers, Health Concerns, Blue Poppy, Evergreen, um, Khan, uh, uh, everybody that's out there, you know, uh, we're going to talk about who's got what, who's got something for this that's already made that we can manage a problem with. And I'm also going to talk about custom formulas for the herbalists that are customizing their own prescriptions. A lot of that information will be coming from Chinese sources. Um, they'll be published, have been published in Chinese, uh, in China, in, in usually in English and Chinese. And we're going to reference the way the Chinese are dealing with these problems with customized formulas. As an herbalist, I think that customizing is a great way to go. I tend to use powders uh, that I mix, and uh, we can always talk about how do you manage this? How do you make a powder? What is your what is your gram dosage that you're giving? And so on and so on. All these practical questions is, is how I like to teach. And so, um, so we'll talk about the TCM therapeutics with products and with custom formulas. Sometimes, not always, we'll talk about special acupuncture approaches. I know in the acupuncture world, we have groups that do TCM acupuncture. We have groups that do Japanese style meridian balancing acupuncture. I don't have to give too much on acupuncture because you can, those sources exist. They exist. And once you know the patterns that we're looking for, then you can adjust your acupuncture according to your own training. The other part of the therapeutics is functional medicine therapeutics, what they're using, nutritional supplements, uh, either as isolated vitamins, minerals, amino acids, or compounded products that people have. And I, and I don't know, and I'm going to call names, I'm going to say this product is good, that product is good, I'm going to talk from my own experience. Uh, so we will be talking about nutritional uh, supplements that are important. Some of them are necessary. Some things you're just not going to fix with Chinese herbs, and you're going to have to use the supplements. So don't don't worry about that. Don't worry about that if that's where we go. Um, obviously, my own experience is limited. I I treat my way, and I use what I use. Uh, there are going to be manufacturers that feel well. We didn't include their 
products or labs that we didn't include their lab tests. It's a huge subject, functional medicine. And to get into it from where they're doing it, the holistic docs and the chiropractors and naturopaths, you have to go to their trainings, where they're getting it from. And most of the labs and manufacturers will have opportunities for training. So once you get into this, you can get in deeper and deeper and deeper. I guess what I'm doing is kind of an introduction relying on my clinical experience, but it's just the beginning of opening the book. You need to, um, uh, if you're interested in these topics, there are so many resources that you can go to, trainings, webinars, uh, books, um, and so on, that get you much deeper into it. When we start talking lab tests, I'm going to talk about what I use but there are other tests out there I may not even know about that are great. So, you know, it's opening a new door. How do I integrate this successfully? Why are we doing it for our patients? We're doing it for our patients to get them better, faster, cheaper. Now, I don't go full hog on the labs and nutritional supplements because they're very expensive. My clinical practice are people that are working. You know, they're not trust funders. They don't have unlimited funds. They have limited spending dollars, especially on the supplements. Even if their insurance covers the visit, they never cover the herbs or the supplements. So you have to control it. I never give more than five things total. And two of those, I want everybody sort of almost to be on fish oil and probiotics. So that leaves me three things to give, three or four things. And one of those is going to be herbal formula. So I can only put in two or three supplements. So I don't swamp my patients with medicines. I don't think you have to if you do it right. I think if you choose carefully, you don't have to go crazy with this. The functional medicine doctors give every vitamin and nutrient they think might help, and it's just wrong because it's too expensive. People can't afford it. All right. So let's move on here with these, these notes. Okay, organization, of course. A lot of times I talk off the cuff, then I find out my notes say exactly the same thing. It's kind of redundant. So for each topic, we will discuss a modern illness. We'll talk about the demographics, the medical physiology, etiology. We'll discuss the conventional medical approach. Then we'll discuss the functional medicine approach. There's a whole group of functional medicine doctors. So they work from clinical modern research studies that support what it is they're trying to do. They look, when you go to a functional medicine lecture, a third of the handouts will be sites of references because that's important to them. You know, they want evidence-based medicine and their biggest enemy is conventional Western doctors who don't believe any of this stuff because they don't really see the evidence. So they're trying to impress regular doctors that all of it is evidence-based. And then their treatments are nutritional treatments, usually based on modern research to some extent. You got to understand, unlike 40 years ago, the world is full of PhD biochemists and uh, molecular chemists who are looking for stuff to do. So they, they keep going deeper and deeper and deeper into human physiology and, and supplements that can affect the human physiology. So there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, then I'm going to explain the illness according to TCM, its pathophysiology, the etiology, the pattern differentiations, the management of, uh, of cases through various pattern presentations. I'm going to talk about herbal treatments, custom prescribing, classical formulas that are in product form, and then modern formulas that are in product form. And then how to integrate the two together in a real clinical practice. How to work with real cases. What do you do when they don't fit the textbook? What do you do when they're not getting better? And that's the, what the really kind of the last class is about. What do I do when I did everything you said and they're not getting better? Well, we can talk about that. And by the way, you can't make everything get better. There's more to disease than just throwing medicines at them. You, but we can help a lot of people. We really can. All right. So this... This part is called uh, Integrating Functional Medicine with TCM. What is functional medicine? Okay. It's a modern approach to health and disease that attracts holistic MDs, chiropractors, naturopaths, and practitioners of TCM. It also attracts nutritionists. It also attracts nurses. 
uh, especially um, uh, nurse practitioners. Nurse practitioners are getting very big in this field. Um, uh, it closely observed, now I'm talking about it just from the functional medicine point of view, which I'm abbreviating as FM. Um, it closely observes the physiology and etiology of the disease. It relies on contributes to medical studies. Here's, here's what we're talking about today. It recognizes environmental toxins as new and persistent stressors on health. These are the heavy metals, pesticides and herbicides, plastics, solvents, and paints, pharmaceuticals, especially the, over, the elderly are just way over medicated. GMO foods, you know, GMO foods are made with uh, Roundup, which then destroy your bacteria in your guts, right? Looks good on paper, but you're, you're really injuring your, your internal ecology and you're injuring the soil bacteria around the roots of the plant. It's depleting a lot of important bacteria. So GMO is more than just, you know, they're not natural, I don't like them. I mean, they really are causing harm that we're gonna talk about. Uh, functional medicine utilizes new laboratory tests for identifying exogenous factors and to assess consequences on the health, particularly on organ function. So they have laboratory tests that can assess liver function, adrenal function, heart function, blood sugar regulation, hormone regulation, pituitary, pineal, thyroid, adrenal, ovary in particular, neurotransmitter influences on behavior, on developmental disorders, on sleep disorders, the whole idea of uh, liver detoxification, stomach and esophageal function, when someone has gastritis, do they have Helicobacter pylori or not? Because if they do and you don't address that, they won't get better. And if you do address it, they do get better. This is why the labs are important. Small intestine permeability, this is what I cover in leaky gut syndrome. This is a ubiquitous problem um, that causes a lot of illnesses. It's a great subject. Um, it's a great way to deal with patients who say, nobody can help me. I've been to so many doctors, they don't get it, and so on. And a lot of skin disorders, by the way, are due to this. And behavioral neurotransmitter problems. The whole idea of chronic fatigue, why does that happen? Um, chronic pain and inflammation is a big one. It's a big one. I, I, I don't have a separate class for this, and I wish I did, but I'm going to include it in my so-called detoxification class next time. The second class when we talk about detoxification, I'm going to get into the whole idea of chronic pain and inflammation. Uh, cancer support. I don't want to support the you know, growing of cancer. It's really supporting someone who has cancer and especially how to get through chemotherapy, how to get through radiation, how to get through surgery. And then infectious diseases, uh, Lyme's disease, uh, I'd like to be able to talk about. Um, but that's what the, the labs do. You see, the labs open us up. Now, I'm going to show you tricks of what to do if you're an acupuncturist in a state where you don't have lab privileges. I, we have a, a trick of how you can do this. A couple of tricks. Uh, of course, if you're in a state that allows labs, we'll talk about what labs to look for and to use. Now, if you're an acupuncturist in a state that doesn't permit lab tests, I would really work with the state associations to try to get that in place because it's really silly. Um, we have to, we are, and we need to promote ourselves as uh, general family practitioners because that's what we are, especially if we're herbalists. We are general practitioners and uh, we have to know what's going on with the patient. Now, our treatment is herbs and acupuncture versus pharmaceutical medicine. But outside of that, we should really know as much about Western medicine as we can because our patients think we do and our patients may only be using us and not going to anyone else. Or there's the opposite, which is they go to too many people or they go to too many doctors and doctors don't do the right thing. Um, so blood tests, let's just put a parameter on blood tests. Um, the functional medicine people have a much more narrow 
broad span of what a proper function is. So like in regular blood tests, they'll go highs and lows. And if they're within that group, they're not flagged. And for most medical doctors, if they're not flagged, they don't, uh, they don't pay any attention to them. They just ignore it, you know. Um, the functional medicine people will actually say it's the middle 50% that's normal. The wider range is just everybody that's got it and they're doing a huge spectrum, but that what's really should be normal should be the middle 50%. And if it's in the upper 25% or lower 25%, it's probably not all that normal. For example, thyroid. In the conventional test, though, the medical range for TSH, they'll say it's 1.4 to 5.5. So if you have a thyroid, a TSH of 5, they'll say you're fine. It's not your thyroid, which is ridiculous because even the endocrinologists have said that the top end should be three on TSH. In the functional range, they'll put it 1.4 to 2.5. So they'll put 2.5 as the upper limit of normal. So when we talk about thyroid, you can't, you know, in thyroid problems, fatigue and metabolism and hair loss and skin problems and fertility, if they're saying, well, you know, your TSH is a five, you're fine. It's not fine. It's not fine. So we have to know how to order a test or to encourage them to get a test in order to put that right. Now, in functional medicine, the, uh, the therapeutic approaches, um, they will use uh, nutrients and nutrient combinations. So they're using vitamins, minerals and, trace, minerals and trace minerals and amino acids in the main. Uh, they are also using Western herbs in isolation. And the reason... They'll use one isolated um, um, it, the reason they're using one isolated uh, um, herb is because they have scientific research on it. So um, so uh, you know they'll just take glyceriza and as, as a single herb and so on. They'll use glandulars, which are actually glands from pigs and sheep. Uh, to do things. Of course, they use diet and exercise, which I think is really important. I think a lot of problems could be fixed with diet and exercise. Um, and medical doctors will use pharmaceuticals. For example, they'll use Cortef for adrenal fatigue. Now, some of those pharmaceuticals are fine. I'm not 100% against pharmaceuticals. I'm for what helps the patient the best without hurting them. And for some patients, taking Cortef is just uh, very helpful. Now, we can't prescribe Cortef, but there are things like Cortef we can prescribe. Okay. Okay, so resources for further study just within the functional medicine umbrella. Um, there are people who make supplements, and they have lots of resources. You go into them, you sign up as a customer or, or anything, they have webinars, they have printings, they will send you stuff. These, I think the, the two best sources for further training is to go to the manufacturers and go to the labs because they're the ones who teach you what's going on. Uh, the, the, the big manufacturers and uh, would be Thorn, Zymogen, Pure Encapsulations, Designs for Health, Metagenics, and of course there's many others, there's many, many other companies. Uh, all of whom have educational literature. They all have very high standards of manufacturing, by the way. And the good ones are expensive. This is the problem. You can't, you know, you, you look at what they want to do. They want to give out five, six, seven products. And, you know, they're like, these products are 20 to $40 or more for one product. So, so you know, we've got to talk about that. The labs are wonderful in terms of, of education. I like diagnostics. I think they're great. Genova and Metametrics, I think everybody knows this group. U.S. Biotech just has a few tests, but they're very good at what they do. Quicksilver Scientific, we're going to talk about them. They're very focused just on heavy metal detoxification. And then Cyrex, of course, if you know Cyrex, um, very thorough. It's, some of these labs can be too thorough. You have to ask yourself as a clinician, what do I really need here? Do I really have to do these panels? Because patients don't want to spend a lot on labs. You know, you can say, I want to do a lab for $200, and they'll say, fine. But if you say, I want to do three labs that are 200 each, they're not going to be so fine with this. So you have to really pick and choose. You know, unless you're just doing a rich person's practice, 
And I know some of you are, but but the general population can afford X amount. They want to fix their problems, but they have limited resources. So so let's be let's be kind on this. You know?